things I forgot to save. All right, so moving on to features, nothing to do there. Agents, this is a team. Both their names are already here, but if one of them wasn't, you can go ahead and add it by just clicking the plus sign. And then you search and pick the, the correct agent. People, we already have our seller there. We need to add our buyer. And again, I always search before I add anything. I guess it's just a habit. <laughs> Not there, so I'm going to add them. And if you have like this one, a husband and wife or whatever they are, um, when you're typing both their names, um, if you could type and instead of the ampersand, that would be great. Because when you type in the ampersand, it doesn't show. So I'm going to add. And there they are. Escrow, nothing to do there. Commission, we want to put in our commission amount, which is already there. Our transaction fee is already there. Normally it isn't, but because it's a duplicate, sometimes the information feeds over for whatever reason. I'm gonna add my other broker. And again, I always search. Add, there they are. This one has a referral, so I'm going to go ahead and add that down here with the plus sign. And again, I always search before I add anything. It's Rocket Homes Real Estate, so there they are. Save. And I need to add my referral here. And I hit save. And you can see now the referral amount is down here as well. Okay, so commission, referral goes there, referral info here. Okay, now in this case, we have a team. And on this team, one of them gets the production credit and one of them gets paid. She gets the production credit, he gets the money. So we want to change this figure to 100. So she gets the award 100%, he gets the money. And you can see his commission is here. She has zero. Nothing on the selling side because it's not our sale. Nothing to do on this screen other than maybe just verify your commission amounts, referral amount, franchise fee. And that is it. Any questions on that one? Okay, moving on. Now I'm going to put in a sale in which we have both sides. We have the listing side, we have the selling side. It is our listing, so it should be here. So I'm going to search for it. There it is. Okay, I'm gonna put in my selling price. Ending date. And he has, he also has the selling side, so I need to check this box here. And I need to add him. Double click, and there he is. Now we have him on the list side and on the sell side. And I want to save. Let me 
I can move on. Features, nothing to do there. That's just all the information that feeds from the MLS. Agents, he's on the listing side, he's on the selling side. People, I need to add my seller and my buyer. Click on the plus sign, search. Not there, so I'm going to add. Type in their name, hit add. Now, if it is our customer, um, we need to know the lead source. Um, if you don't know the lead source, it's going to show on um, on the dashboard as missing information. So I just do it while I'm here. After I enter the, the new person, the customer's name, I click on their name. And I need to enter the info here where it says source. And if you know the source, great. If you don't, you can just select other. In this case, I don't know the source. I don't know the lead. So I'm going to select unknown and then I click save. And if I click on properties, it takes me back to where I was. And now I'm going to enter the buyer. I get a search first, not there. I'm going to add them. Again, I'm going to click on their name. If you know the source, add it. If not, you can just choose other and save. If you click properties, it brings you back to where you are. So that screen is awesome. Escrow, nothing to do there. Commission, we need to put in our commission amount. And there's a fee for the seller. Save. Or it doesn't let you move on. Both agents are here, same agent for each for each side. There's no referrals, so I have nothing to put here. Agent net list, that's the listing side. And these figures are normally correct unless you're adding something. If the agent is paying the transaction fee, you would add it here. Again, you check the box and you would type it in. If the agent is making a payment on their account, you can also add it here, check this box and put in the amount here. Then recalculate and it will recalculate that figure. And then the post screen, again, nothing to do here other than verifying all your numbers. Commission on the listing side, the selling side, and our franchise fee down here. And that is it for listing and selling. Any questions on that one? All right, moving on. I'm going to enter another one that is our listing and our sale. So I'm going to go up and search for the property. And this is actually for our Century 21 office. It's our listing, so the information is already here. My sale price. Ending date. She also sold it, so I need to select that side. So 
first musky, which we sold, and then click save. Now I can move on. Features, nothing to do there. Agents, since they're on both sides. People, I need to add my seller and my buyer. Again, I always search before I add anything. Not there, so I'm going to add. And again, I'm going to click on her name. So we can add the source. Save. Oh, you can add email addresses here if you need them for some reason. With the Century 21 agents, um, their customers are sent surveys. So we add their email addresses. Save. Properties brings you back to where you were. And now you can add your buyer. Again, I always search. Oh, there's a few of those. Okay, not there. Add your source, save, click properties, brings you back to where you are. Oh, forgot to add his email address. Let me do that. Properties brings you back. Okay, escrow, nothing to do there. Commission. Save. There are no referrals to add here, so I can move on. Now Hearst didn't calculate properly because the formulas are not established yet for our Century 21 agents, but I'll go ahead and fix that later. So that would be your listing side, selling side, post, also nothing to do here except verify all your numbers. Commission, commission, whoops. And then your franchise speaks down here. Okay, so that's it for our listing, our selling side. Any questions on that one? I don't have questions on these per se, but is this gonna take over for the dispersion sheets as well? Or do we still have to fill those out? Um, I think eventually they would like to get rid of those disbursement sheets. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, I think those are great as backup just to verify all our numbers. We use them here as well at Sunstorm. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great double check, so you don't technically have to ever get rid of them if you don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes they're a bit of a pain to fill out, but I mean, it right. is, it's a good backup just to verify yeah. our numbers. I, I don't mind them. I don't either, but yeah. just, I was just, because it looks like all the information from the dispersants on here as well, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
You can continue using it. We probably will here just, again, just to verify your numbers. Okay. It's a good little backup to have just in case. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so now I have a couple of sales to enter that are not our listing. So there's no need for me to search because it's not our listing, so it will not be here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on new. And I know it seems strange to start a new record from the screen you're working in, but that's just the way it works. So if you click new, that brings you to this lovely little screen here where I add a new property. So you're going to select the appropriate company. We have two. This is residential. It is a residential sale. It is a single family detached. And if you click on the little arrow, you'll see all the different options, condo, everything else you can think of. So I need all of these, the company, the type code, the accounting code, and the property type. Status, it's pending. I'm gonna put in my MLS number. Pending date. Close date. And then my address. And then I'm going to click save. And now this probably looks familiar. It looks like all the others we've done so far. So I'm going to need to put in not quite the same information, but just the selling price. My pending date, of course, is already there because I added it in the first screen. Here, I need to select my agent. Check the box, click, and then search. And there it is. So that's all the information I need here. Selling price, agent, and the pending and close date will already be there because you entered it in the previous screen. So I'm gonna save, because you can see everything is gray. It won't let me move on. Features, there's nothing because it didn't feed from anywhere. Agents, there's my agent right there. People, need to add my seller and my buyer. Click on the plus. Search. Add the buyer. So buyer. Escrow, nothing to do there. Add my commission. Save. And add the broker on the listing side. already there. There's no referral to add here. I can move on. Nothing on the list side because it's not our listing. Selling side, agent's commission. Again, if they were paying, if anything was being deducted from them, you know, you would add it here. Transaction fee, check the box, type in your amount, payment on account, check the box, add your amount, recalculate, 
AM post. Again, you're just verifying all your numbers. Nothing to do here. And that is it for that one. I'll go ahead and do another one. I think of the three scenarios, this is probably the most, I wouldn't say difficult, but because the information is not already present, you have to add everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and do another one. I'm gonna click new. Sunstraw. Again, it's residential. It's a residential sale. It's a single family detached. It is pending. MLS number. Pending date. Close date. Address. save. Okay, to put in my selling price. Sell agent. Again, I always search. All the agents will be there soon. Yes, I have a question. Sure. Uh, what, is there going to be anything that will tell us what information is required on this? Is there like asterisks or anything like that? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, there's no asterisk indicating required fields. Um, no, there isn't. But this will be like second nature once you start plugging away in it. Okay, so I put in my agent, my price. I'm going to move on to features. There's nothing there. Nothing to do there. Agents, my agent is there. People, I need to add my seller and my buyer. There, I'm going to add them. That's not our customer, so I don't have to worry about a lead source. I need to add my buyer. On their name so I can add the source, the lead source. In this case, I don't know what it is. Save. Properties. Brings you back to where you were. Escrow, nothing to do there. Commission. And in this case, there is no transaction fee because it's a VA loan. You could note that here if you wanted to and save. Now I'm going to add the broker on the listing side. And there they are. It's 
no more listing, so there's nothing there. Commission on the selling side. Post. Again, nothing to do here other than verify your numbers. Are there any questions on entering this type of sale? It's pretty straightforward once you become familiar with it. If you've used Cero or Dash, formerly known as Crest, pretty much putting in the same information, it just looks different. I think account tech's pretty user friendly, but I've been poking around in it for a while now, um, but we still come across some scenarios that we're unfamiliar with. But I think putting in sales is pretty straightforward. I think the only time you might run into a problem is if there's something strange going on with commission. You know, if there's something weird going on here or some type of deduction that needs to be made that you're not familiar with. In that case, we turn to Mike Griffith in Michigan. <laughs> He's always very helpful. <laughs> or Brianne, she's always very helpful. But other than that, you can see that it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. Um, if you need me, if you'd like me to add any, you know, do another one, another scenario, I certainly can. Or is everyone feeling confident? All right, I'm going to take that. Is everyone feeling confident? Let's see if I have anything else in there. Sure, we'll have some uh, questions for you once we start doing them. <laughs> Yeah, once you get in here and you start poking around, you'll, sure, if you have questions, I'm happy to help you answer them. Karen and I have been um, in account tech for quite a few months now. So to us, it's pretty, you know, we're pretty comfortable with it. And, but again, when we were playing in the sandbox, you know, it seemed a little bit overwhelming. Um, especially since we were going to be the guinea pigs and go live first, but we did get um, adequate time to play in the program before it went live, so we weren't feeling overwhelmed, which was nice. But yeah, if you have any questions when you get started, you know, feel free to email me. Um, I don't normally answer the phone in the morning when we're processing closings, but. I will return your call in the afternoon when we are done. Between Karen and I, we are happy to answer your questions and she had to leave for an appointment or she would be answering for herself. <laughs> but she's also- yes, I think you did have some questions too. Somebody was asking um, if you could edit these after the fact. You mean after you've put in all the information and saved it? Yeah. Yeah, you can, like if I made a mistake, like if this, if when I received the closing, for example, the selling price changed, I can go ahead and change it. The only time you can't edit a transaction is after it's been closed by accounting in Michigan. Once the transaction is closed, we can't change anything. Um, but while it's in pending status, Yes, you can. Like if this, oh, wrong price, I can go ahead and change it. No problem. And it's just telling me that the commission price is not normally greater than the selling price. Okay. So then you're just going by transaction number after the fact? You can look up the properties by um, street name, street number, this ID here, if you know, you know, if you had right. a, I'm just thinking vacant land that uses a lot of the same addresses. Yeah, with vacant land. Is that, are we putting those ID numbers on the cover sheets then after? You can, like when the disbursement sheets that we send up to Michigan, we put the ID number on it. 
Um, but also you have an MLS number and everything has its own MLS number. Sure. So you know, if, if like you were saying with vacant land, there are, mm -hmm. you know, there are 20 lots on Carlton Street. <laughs> you want to search for it by MLS number. That's probably, mm -hmm. probably the easiest way because everything is going to have an MLS number normally unless it's through construction. But yeah, you can search by MLS number, you can search by street number, by street name. No, I just don't so, Are all these gonna have their own specific ID number besides the MLS number? Yes. Is, this, is the system gonna assign them an ID number? Yes, this okay. ID number is assigned by the system, yep. Okay, I'm perfect there, okay. Mm -hmm. And then when do we start putting our listings and stuff in here? Well, you, you, we you, don't, you won't put listings in here. The listings feed from the MLS. Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Which is great, because all the information mm -hmm. is here. You just right. have to put the pending info, the sale info. Yeah. But yeah, everything feeds from the MLS. Um, and for okay, the right. reason it's not in there, uh, you, it's probably a problem somewhere. Right. <laughs> Because if it's in the MLS, it should be here. <laughs> so that's a nice feature of the program. Mm -hmm. to all of that. I don't know how many people use Lucero, but everything needs to be entered. You know, listings, sales, everything. So this will be a great time saver for sure, because you don't have to enter all the information. Right. And again, the search feature is very, you know, user friendly. You can search by street name, as you can see, I have up there, or uh, number if you know it. You can um, show advanced filter options. You can see all the different categories here that you can search by. So it's, I mean, it, I find it pretty user friendly. Christina had asked, what about for sale by owners? Is there anything different you're doing with those? Or created sales? For sale by owner, again, would be. So it would be, an, you would have to enter it as a new transaction. You would, you know, do that. And I think for sale by owner is in one of these categories. I mean, it would be residential, of course. It might be, let's see if I can find it. That's gonna be a residential sale. I thought it was in here somewhere, maybe not. I could swear there was a physical in here, but I may be thinking of something else. So in that case, you know, you would select residential, residential sales, single family detachment. We do here in our office where it says MLS number, we type in FISBO because there is no MLS number. So here we would type FISBO and then continue with the rest of the information. Are there any other questions? Do you know when this area will be in the sandbox? Has everyone already started using Account Tech? No. No. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, do you know when we are going to be in there and putting our stuff in? I don't. Hmm. That would be a that. question for Miss Carrie Stump, maybe. I think so. <laughs> She may know. <laughs> Carrie knows everything. <laughs> she does. <laughs> I don't know when you'll be um, given okay. access. I imagine, I imagine it would be soon. Okay. Yeah, yeah I see this says that Mike says, said, Mike, you said January. Oh, yeah, she could be in the sandbox before that. I think, I think um, somebody was asking when our sandbox turn would come. I would imagine maybe a month or a few weeks or so before, maybe. Oh, okay. And the sandbox is great because you can poke around in there and, you know, it's not live. The program isn't live. You can't mess anything up. <laughs> you, have, <laughs> yeah. you have time to 
get comfortable with you know all the fields and with the information that you need so yeah the sandbox was great we played around in it for quite a while which was nice and then when we went live it didn't seem so overwhelming which was even nicer <laughs> but yeah are there any other questions anything I'm sure you'll have more questions when you actually start playing in the program and getting in there and adding the information. Again, when you do, happy to help. So if that's- I also have a question. Sure. Um, the fan account or whatever, is that something we would be doing? The what, I'm sorry? Um, taking from their account, paying commission towards um, their statement. If they want you to deduct it, yeah, you can, that goes here. Like in this office, for example, um, some of the agents prefer that we take it from a closing. So they'll let us know, okay, hey, Chris, oh, Karen, could you deduct whatever I owe from the next closing I have? So we'll make note of that. And when we come across that closing, that is what we do. We put it here. This here in payment account. And again, you check the little box, put in the amount, recalculate, and it's all good. So yeah, we don't do that without their permission though. If they've asked us to do it, that's when we do it. And we don't have too many that do that, but there's a few. Most people are on credit card or they pay by check. But there are a few that will ask us to deduct it from their closings, and that's where it would go. Any other questions? No? So I guess we're good for um, now. Somebody asked what what next week's was going to cover. Are you going to are you going to re go over this again? Um, I'll have to check with Carrie to find out what she wants me to cover next week or if it's going to kind of be the same thing. Um, like for the, for the folks that do closings, like Karen and I, you know, there's a little bit more information that you'll need to know. Um, but for those who are just processing the pendings, this is pretty much what you need to know. Everything that I reviewed today. So I'll have to check with her to find out what she wants me to share next week or if it'll be the same thing or I'll check with her. And then I'm sure she'll let everybody know. Any other questions? No. Well, if there's no other questions, I'm guessing we can call it a wrap for today. And this will Thank you, Chris. meet again next Thursday. <laughs> Thank you all for listening. And again, Thank you. Karen, so just let me know and I'm happy to answer them. All right. Thank you, Chris.